Hello everyone and a warm welcome to Directions Live Online. My name is Manish Patel and I'm your host for today's session. Now as always just a reminder before we get started that we are recording today's session and we'll be sending out a link to the recording later this week. So if you want to rewatch it you'll have that available to you. Also do ask questions. You can do that at any point of time during the presentation by adding your questions in the go to webinar panel on the right hand side. We have got plenty of time at the end where we can answer any of your questions. Today's presenter is Hutan Ahmed, solution, <coughs> consultant solution engineering with SD Australia. Hutan will cover about what are the new ArcGIS user types and why they have changed. Hutan will summarize the five different user types and make it simple to understand. Also, how to migrate from the old user types model. So without any further ado, I shall pass the presentation to Hutan. Over to you, Hutan. Thanks, Manish, and uh, hello, everyone. Let's kick our presentation off by talking about the old named user models first as a bit of a background. The concept of tiered named users started back in 2016 with ArcGIS Enterprise version 10.5 and the ArcGIS Online December 2016 update. At that point, the previous concept of a singular named user was expanded to include two user levels. The new level one users had a view only privilege and were a more cost effective way of sharing your private content organization wide. Aside from some minor changes, this two level named user model has been in use until the December 2018 ArcGIS Online update and the new 10.7 version of ArcGIS Enterprise. With these new releases, the named user model evolved into what's being called the new user types. So what are these new user types? Well, simply put, the new ArcGIS user types are the embodiment of Esri's vision for role-based licensing. The five new user types shown on the screen here are designed to map closely with the five most common types of roles we see in organizations that have adopted ArcGIS technology today. Each user type includes a set of privileges, such as viewing, editing, or creating, as well as a set of application bundles, like the field bundle or office bundle. Starting from the viewer user on the bottom left-hand side and moving up to the GIS professional user type on the top right, we see a gradual increase in capabilities, privileges, and bundled applications. So why the change? Well, this was actually driven by customer requests for more intermediate user levels. Some customers said that they had user groups that needed to be able to add data to maps, but didn't necessarily need to be able to author entire applications. Others said that they had user groups that needed to be able to use the field applications, but not necessarily architect their own solutions. That's why Esri came up with a model that more closely matched the way the users got work done. With that in mind, this is how the old level one and level two users map to the new user types. The old level one users are equivalent to the new viewer user types, and the old level two users are equivalent to the new creator user type. So if you don't change anything and upgrade to enterprise 10.7, you'll see that all of your old level one users are now viewers, and all of your old level two users are now creators. So you can keep everything the same, and that's totally valid. But it's always good to keep in mind that change brings about opportunity. By embracing the new user types, you might, you might find that some creators in your organization don't actually need all the privileges that the user type carries. They might not all need the ability to author maps. Maybe some only need to be able to edit existing data in maps. You could consider switching the user type for those people to an editor level instead. On the other hand, this might be the perfect opportunity to bring new people from your organization into the world of GIS when it might have been cost prohibitive in the past. 
A great example is empowering the individuals in your organization who collect data out in the field by granting them new field worker user types. You could even take this opportunity to grant named users to your outside consultants and contractors so they can use your GIS-driven workflows as well. All right, let's dive right into the five main user types to see which applications and which privileges are included with each. Our first stop is the viewer user type. As the name suggests, this user type has view-only access to the Essentials app bundle. The Essentials bundle includes Esri Story Maps, Web App Builder, Operations Dashboard, Configurable Apps, as well as Map and Scene Viewer. It's also important to point out that just like the level one users before, the new viewer user types are also free with your ArcGIS Enterprise license. In fact, for most of this presentation, the data and the information that we're going to cover about the new user types are the same between ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise, except for the fact that in ArcGIS Enterprise, your viewer licenses are free and complementary, but in ArcGIS Online, there's a cost associated with them. Next up is the editor named user. The editor user has view and edit privileges for the same essentials application bundle. So where a viewer could only view a map, the editor can view a map and edit the features in that map. Once we get to the field worker level, we unlock the field apps bundle, which includes collector, survey123, workforce, and the new application called tracker for ArcGIS. All of these privileges are in addition to the new view or to the view and edit permissions for the essentials bundle. You can see now that each level tends to build off of the previous one. Once you're at the creator level, you have the ability to not only use the apps in the essentials and field apps bundles, but to also author or create them to share with your organization. Additionally, creators also have access to office apps bundle which includes ArcGIS Maps for Office and ArcGIS Maps for SharePoint. So we can see here that the view and edit privileges for the Essentials bundle are the same as before, but now you have the ability to create applications in the Essentials bundle and create field applications in the Field Apps bundle to share with the rest of your organization. Our final standard user type is the GIS Professional. The GIS Professional has all the same privileges as the creator, except it now comes bundled with an ArcGIS Pro license. If you're familiar with ArcGIS Pro licensing, you'll know that it's available in three levels, basic, standard, and advanced. Therefore, the GIS professional user type also comes in those three flavors. If you'd like more information on what each of the licensing levels contain, you can type in the URL below or simply search for the phrase ArcGIS desktop levels and click on the top result. Okay. That was a lot to cover, but don't take your learning hats off just yet because, yes, there is a bonus new user type called the Insights Analyst user type. We're seeing business analysts and data scientists working more and more closely with the GIS teams in our organizations as they begin to see the immense value of spatial information for driving insights. As you might know, Insights for ArcGIS is a powerful data analytics tool that's driven by location. It's a premium application and can be licensed and added to any collector or GIS professional user as an add-on. This is a great option for GIS people who'd like to perform data analytics. However, if you have a data analyst who's interested in using GIS data and ArcGIS Insights, but has no need to create maps and apps, then the bonus Insights Analyst user type is the way to go for them. This extra user type will only grant the bearer access to the Insights application. As a quick recap, we can put the five main user types as well as their capabilities in the matrix below. And we can also see the Insights Analyst user type sitting outside of that table. And as we remember, the JS Professional user type comes in the three flavors of basic, standard, and advanced. For the next section of the presentation, I'd like to share a bit of insight on how user types and permissions are broken down for the specific field applications. Okay, here's a chart published by Esri. It might look a little daunting at first, so I'm going to guide you through this with a couple of examples. Let's say that I wanna use the collector app in the field to perform an inspection and collect data. We'll look under the collector for ArcGIS heading, 
And under that, we can see capture and inspect using the collector field app as a subheading. We'll follow that subheading across, and we can see that it corresponds to the field worker user type and above. So that's field worker, creator, and JS Pro. You need any of these three user types in order to perform that kind of um, work with the collector field app. If you have a viewer or editor user level, you don't have enough privileges to capture and inspect using the collector field app. Another example, uh, what if I want to use the Explorer app in the field to view a map and create some red line markup on it? Okay, we'll come and look at the Explorer for ArcGIS heading. And under that, there's a subheading that says markup maps using Explorer app. This is referring to the red line markup. And we can see that this actually corresponds to all five user levels. That means viewers, editors, field workers, creators, or ArcGIS professionals all have the ability to use the Explorer for ArcGIS application and markup maps using that app. This chart is from the ArcGIS blog, and I'm including a link to it on our references page right here. I highly recommend having a look at all four of the resources that are mentioned. Uh, to reach the resources, you can either type in the full URL or simply search for the, uh, the key phrases that are provided and select the top result. Uh, it looks like we have some time left, so let's run through a couple of scenarios. Okay, this is our first scenario. We have a uh, small organization of 50 people. There is a GIS team of three that creates and publishes maps with ArcGIS Pro for the rest of the organization to view. There are five office workers that use Survey123 in the web browser to you know, organize inspections. And there are five field workers that use Collector to perform inspections. Okay, let's, uh, let's break this scenario down. So our first point is a JS team of three that creates and publishes maps with ArcGIS Pro for the rest of the organization to view. And uh, as we might recall, there's a JS professional user type that's perfect for this. It has all the privileges of a creator, which would be um, creating and publishing maps. And it comes with an ArcGIS Pro license. So we'll go ahead and add three JS professional user types for our JS team to our tally. Next up, we have our five office workers that need to use Survey123 in the web browser to organize inspections. And the, uh, the important point here is that they're using Survey123 in the web browser. They don't need to use the native app. What that actually means is under Survey123, there's the option to submit surveys using the web browser, and that only requires editor level privileges and above. So while we can grant the, the, the five office workers field worker user types, we could also get away with just granting them editor level user types, and that might lead to some cost savings for us. So we'll go and add five editor users to our tally. Next up, we have our five field workers that need to use Collector to perform inspections. And um, as we remember from before, to do pretty much anything with Collector, you need to have at least a field worker level. And sure enough, capture and inspect using the Collector field app requires a uh, field worker user type or above. We'll go ahead and add five field worker users to our tally. To sum it all up, uh, for our organization of 50 people, we'll have three JS professional users, five editors, five field workers, and the remaining 37 will grant viewer users. This is the context of ArcGIS Enterprise, so viewer users are free. We might as well just include everyone in our, in our GIS platform here by granting them a, a viewer user type. Okay. Scenario number two, uh, this time we have a medium organization of 200 people. There is one JS specialist who creates and publishes maps with Pro, five sector leads who oversee the field workers and create workflows for them, 100 field workers who use Collector, Survey123, and Workforce to perform their daily tasks, and one business analyst who is responsible for creating dashboards for efficiency tracking. Um, we can see this kind of profile as being very uh, field worker focused. So let's go ahead and break this down as well. <clears throat> Our GIS specialist needs to create and publish maps with ArcGIS Pro. So just like before, we'll go ahead and grant that person a GIS professional user type. Then we get to our sector leads, and they need to oversee the field workers and create workflows for them. So if we remember from before, our field workers need to access Workforce for ArcGIS, Survey123, and Collector 
So our sector leads will need to essentially have administrator access to those three applications. In order to administer projects with for, uh, Workforce for ArcGIS, we'll need a creator or JS professional user type. In order to design, manage, and publish surveys with Survey123, we'll need a creator or above. And in order to prepare maps using ArcGIS Online, or in our context, prepare maps using ArcGIS Portal for use with Collector for ArcGIS, we'll need a creator level or above. So we'll go ahead and add uh, five creator user types for our five sector leads. Then we get to our field workers, and uh, our field workers need to use Collector, Survey123, and Workforce. Uh, in order to use Workforce to complete assignments with the application, um, you can actually have an editor level and above. But to use Survey123 as the native app and to use Collector as the native app, you need to have a field worker user type and above. And um, of course, this includes the, uh, the offline capabilities that come with those native apps. So uh, even though we can use an editor for our um, Workforce, uh, everything else corresponds to field worker, so it would make sense to grant 100 field worker user types for our 100 field workers. Next, we have our business analyst who needs to create dashboards for efficiency tracking, and I think this is a pretty good uh, scenario where our bonus insights analyst user type comes in. So this insights analyst user type will grant our business analyst access to the insights um, application. So we'll go ahead and add one Insights Analyst stand standalone user to our tally. Therefore, for our organization of 200 people, we'll have one JS Pro, five creators, 100 field workers, one Insights Analyst, and the remaining 93 will be granted viewer users. OK, final scenario. This time we have a large organization of 1,000 people. There are 10 JS specialists who create and publish maps with Pro, 25 JS analysts who need to perform spatial analysis on the data, 120 call center operations specialists who need to access web maps and edit feature descriptions, and two system administrators who want to publish maps in the organization's SharePoint site. We can see from the profile of this organization that it's pretty heavily skewed through, um, towards our kind of call center operations. It's also important to make note of the fact that our call center operations specialists need to access the web maps as well as edit the features that are in that web map. So let's keep that in mind. And we'll break it down. So uh, 10 JS specialists who need to create and publish web maps with Pro, like before, we'll go ahead and grant them 10 JS Pro user types. Then we get to our analysts. So our 25 JS analysts need to perform spatial analysis on the data. And as we might remember, the creator user type is geared towards authoring, mapping, and analysis work um, in the context of our JS organization. So in order to allow our analysts to perform spatial ana analysis on the data, uh, we'll go ahead and grant 25 creator user types to our 25 JS analysts. Next, we get to our call center operation specialists. And um, as we recall, they need to have access to web maps. and to edit features. If they only needed access to web maps, we could grant them viewer user types, and that would be fine. But since they need to be able to edit features in those web maps, we'll go ahead and elevate their privileges to the editor user type. So we'll add 120 editor users to our um, call center operation specialists. Then we get to our system administrators. So our two sysadmins want to publish maps to the organization's SharePoint site. And as we might also recall from the creator user type, uh, the creator has access to the Office Apps bundle, which includes ArcGIS Maps for SharePoint as one of the applications. And that's exactly what our system administrators need. So in this scenario, we'll go ahead and grant two creator users for our two system administrators. Let's uh, tally our large organization of 1,000 people. We'll have 10 JS pros. 27 creator users, that's the 25 JS analysts and the two uh, system administrators, 120 editors, and the remaining 843 can be granted our complementary viewer user licenses. 
Okay, that's all the material I've prepared for you guys today on the topic of user types in ArcGIS Enterprise version 10.7. I hope you found it informative. Back to you, Manish. Thanks, Hutan. That was a great overview of the licensing user types. And I'm certain everyone found it interesting as well. So we have had a couple of questions come through. Uh, so if you have been lis listening intently to Hutan and you haven't had a chance to type out the questions, there's still time. So you can do that in the questions pane. So to just kick off, we have one of the question from uh, Henry. He asks, how does tracker licensing work? Um, is it the same as the other mobility apps? Hmm. Okay, yeah, that's a good question, Henry. So yeah, tracker is um, it's a brand new application that's coming out actually with the 10.7 release of uh, ArcGIS Enterprise. So if I go back to our um, field worker slide here, you can see that is part of the field apps bundle, but it's also a premium application. So it's a little bit of a unique situation. Um, so Tracker for ArcGIS, it's a premium app. It can be purchased and licensed separately and added to the user types of field worker and above. So that's uh, field worker, creator, and JS professional. Additionally, though, it's um, the add-on license is included with each field worker user type that you've purchased. So if you have 100 field workers and five creators in your organization, you're automatically granted 100 tracker licenses that you can then split between your field workers and creators. So you could uh, grant 95 of those licenses to your field workers and five to your creators or all of them to your field workers. Or if you wanted, let's say, complete coverage, uh, you could purchase um, five additional tracker licenses to add to your pool and then assign 100 to your field workers and five to your creators. Awesome. Um, we do have one more question from uh, Vivian. We, Vivian asks that, does the field worker named user have the ability to create and publish survey one, two, three surveys? Vivian, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Let me find the, um, I found the slide here. Okay, so the short answer is not exactly. Um, in order to create and publish survey one, two, three surveys, you need to have a creator user level or above. So that's creator or JS pro. In order to use the survey one, two, three app, the native application, um, you can do that with a field worker and above and that includes offline work. Uh, in order to use it as a, um, as a on, on the web browser, you need to have the editor and above. So yeah, so to circle back to your question, um, yeah, you need to have a creator level license or above in order to design, manage, and publish survey one, two, three surveys. Great. I hope that answers uh, Vivian's question. We do have one question from James. He asks, what's the difference between creating a map and editing a map? Okay, that's a, that's a good question as well. Let me. Let me fetch a slide here. So I think when you're talking about editing a map, I think you might be referring to the editor user type and um, it can get a little, the wording can get a little confusing here. So when we say editing a map with the editor user, what we really mean is um, editing the content that's in that map. So that would be editing the, um, the features that are in the map. And for that, you can do it with your editor user type. But if you're interested in, um, editing the map itself, you know, changing the configuration and republishing it. Uh, for that, you'd actually need, need to go back to the creator user type that has the privileges to view, edit, and create uh, maps, which would be part of the uh, essentials bundle. And um, actually, this, this might be a pretty good, uh, pretty good segue to a topic. Um, I think a, a neat way to think about the five new user types, I'm gonna bring up the slide here, is to actually divide them into two different sections. So we can divide our five user types kind of down the middle between the field worker and creator like so. And we can look at the two user types on the right hand side as one group, our creator and JS professionals. And these guys are essentially the producers of content for our organization. And then we can look at the three other user types on the left-hand side, the viewer, editor, and field worker. And we can look at those guys as the consumers of GIS content in our organization. Now, yes, it's true that the editor and field worker are able to um, say add feature data, 
But overall, especially in the context of creating maps and apps, uh, the two groups on the right are the creators and the publishers and the producers. And the three on the left are the, um, they're the users and the consumers. OK, great. Um, I do have one more question from Simon, uh, who says, I have users that need to be able to run tasks like feature joins and hotspot analysis in web maps. So what user levels do they need? Yeah, that's a good question, Simon. Um, let me jump to the creator page here, because uh, the tasks that you mentioned, feature joins and hotspot analysis, those fall under under the category of um, spatial analysis. And the creator user type has the analysis capabilities. So um, in order to perform spatial analysis tasks like that, using the analysis tools in Portal, which would be you know, web maps, um, your user needs to be a creator user type or above. So that's creator or JS professional. Awesome. Um, so we have one more question from Susie. She asks, does the GIS professional user type grant access to ArcGIS Pro only, or does it include ArcMap? Yeah, good, uh, good question, Susie. Um, I'm actually glad you asked that because it's important to point out that uh, there's a bit of a distinction here. The GIS professional user type only grants access to ArcGIS Pro. Right? So it only comes with that license for ArcGIS Pro. It doesn't come with a license for ArcGIS Desktop, which would have included uh, ArcMap and other desktop applications. So let's run a scenario here. Um, if you have, let's say, a perpetual desktop license, which has ArcGIS Pro in it, and you're wondering what kind of a user type you should use to, let's say, use that ArcGIS Pro and then publish to your portal, the maps that you've created. Uh, in that scenario, I would say it probably makes more sense to go with a creator user type because you already have the license for ArcGIS Pro and the creator user would let you, um, yeah, the creator user would let you use that Pro and then publish your maps to your organization's portal. All right, okay. I think um, we do have time for one last question. Um, so we have a question from Josie. She says that does the GIS professional user type, um, I'm sorry, uh, it says, uh, I want to use ArcGIS Insights. Should I get an Insights Analyst standalone user or should I add Insights Analyst to an existing user? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's a, it's a, bit, of a, it's a bit of a tricky question. Let me just bring this slide up because you do have both of those options um, available to you, right? You can uh, get the special insights analyst user type, or you can get the insights analyst premium um, license and add it to a creator or uh, or above, so a creator or a GIS pro. I'd say it depends on your specific um, scenario in this case and whether the user that needs to use insights um, also needs to be able to, let's say, create maps and apps uh, for the organization, um, I'd encourage you to give your uh, give your Esri Australia representative a call or an email, or if you don't have one, just reach out to us through our website, and um, we'll have someone work with you um, to figure out what would work best in your specific situation. All right, great. Um, I think that's all the time we have today. So if we have not answered your question, Hutan will surely reach out to you with the response. Do keep a lookout for this space for the upcoming events and webinars. We do have some exciting stuff coming up soon. We really love your feedback, so take time to fill out the brief survey that you'll see pop up at the end of the session. Further feedback or questions can be sent directly to events at sreaustralia.com.au. And finally, if you would like to rewatch this webinar or share this with your colleagues, the recording will be shortly available on the S3 Australia events page. So thanks, Sutan, and thanks everyone for joining us, and we'll see you for the next Directions Live online.